Good morning, folks. We're watching a large plasma filament depart the Earth-facing disk. The filaments and coronal holes present the top things to watch today. The Earth-facing quiet in sunspots and solar flaring continues and in the eruptive activity in Earth's heliographic longitude. We've got a great paper out, podcast in a few hours, in a world of weather, but we begin at spaceweathernews.com seeing the last day on our star. Not much happening. A couple thin filaments and a few dark coronal holes. The solar flaring activity remains very low. Can't even get a C-class flare from the tiny little guy center disk. We will see that little pop in 94 angstroms. Harmless little flash. Solar wind telemetry shows calming conditions at Earth. This observer is surprised the totality of the corona hole system facing us hasn't produced more, but then again, not complaining either. While more fast streams are expected, the focus of the coronal magnetism today is at the North Pole where the fields are bending to allow positive northern ones to crowd the Earth-facing disk with the southern fields already facing us. As most of you know, the best location forecaster is a powerful Earth spot track, the northern system at Japan sitting on top of a rapid seismic uptick that has already hit magnitude 6 this morning. Hopefully nothing more there. And while Japan and Kamchatka have the Earth spots, coronal hole structure suggests we look back to the southwest Pacific, while OLR is focused there as well with some minor anomalies near Central America. Top paper of the summer so far here, a comprehensive look at cosmic ray modulation and clouds. A fantastic confirmation. While the 11-year sunspot cycle modulates an inverse relationship with cosmic rays from the galaxy, short-term space weather events enhance the energetic input to our system similarly. The same way a rise in cosmic rays at solar minimum makes more clouds and ionization, the short-term effects of CME impact do the same. In one of the papers we're reviewing for a work to be published in 2017, it was found that while a four-bush decrease of 2% would be significant for clouds in such an event, the input of solar energy energetic particles and relativistic electrons from the magnetosphere and Van Allen belts was nearer to 9%. So sunspot minimum as a whole increases cloud condensation nuclei and ionization, and so do the short-term bursts of energy in space weather events. This is the Weather Channel. Has the fall predictions out? September should be a weird one temperature-wise, but as fall progresses, we head towards a more normal look to the season. You might recall yesterday we showed the images of that hailstorm that hit France, well, it actually ended up taking down a tree, which took out a train, caused panic, and sent a number of people to hospital. The flooding continues in India, that's the Uttar Pradesh, and it continues east and north into Russia, where St. Petersburg saw a flash event that engulfed a good portion of the Russian city. Folks, it is Saturday, so our podcast, Fly on the Wall, will be coming around lunchtime in the east. We'll go over some of the email back and forth with Dr. Love on the Earthquake Challenge, I'm going to try to drag Adrian out of bed again. We've got news from the field in the world of electric geology. Your support is greatly appreciated. Back here, we've got pressure and radar forecast, followed by shots of our star to close. It's 4.20 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.